Hey family, my name is Richard. And I'm Brittany. And we are the founders of lovealwaysministries.com. And we want to say thank you so much for tuning into this channel. And if you guys could, could you make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated with everything that's going on right here on this channel. And if you'd like to partner with our ministry, you can do so by heading over to lovealwaysministries.com slash donate to make a donation today. Um, or you can give by snail mail. Just look for the website at the bottom of every page on our website. Um, and if you haven't checked out our book, A Call to Purity, what are you waiting for? It is available on Amazon or on our website. Make sure that you pick yourself up a copy today. It is changing lives all over the world. We love you guys. We can't do what we do without you. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And thank you for tuning into our channel. We love you guys so much and we pray God's blessings over you. Today we are going to share with you a message called Sexual Purity. It's worth the wait. Come on. Um, Song of Solomon 8.4 says, Young woman of Jerusalem, I charge you. Do not stir up or awaken love until the appropriate time. Let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get right into the word. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we just thank you so much, Lord, for just being so holy and righteous and pure. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and God, we just come before you and we honor you today and we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak so powerfully you, through my husband and I, that you would anoint every word so much so that everybody that is tuning in would just feel your presence. They would feel your spirit, God, and whatever you want to redirect in their lives, we pray that this message would help them get back on track, Father, and that you would speak so powerfully individually to each and every single person tuning in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So my husband and I, we are the parents of two beautiful little yes. girls. Um, we just had our second daughter about two months ago. And every time that I go to put her down for a nap, I'm always very, very stern with my husband and my daughter, my other daughter. Like I have to tell them, shh, please be quiet. Turn on the white noise machine. Don't wake her up. Shh. Please be quiet because they have the tendency to be a little loud. And so um, the reason why I do this is because once I put her down and she's out like a light, if she gets woken up, it's harder to get her to go back to sleep because yep. she's been woken up. You know, the same is true with lust and with sexual impurities is that once you wake it up, it is harder to put it back to sleep. Yep. And that is why Solomon is saying in this verse, do not awaken love until it is time. And so if you're in a relationship and you haven't had sex yet, keep it, to, keep it at bay. Do not awaken love until the proper time. It is harder to put it back to sleep. Yeah, that was so good. I have a friend who... She happily uh, stayed a virgin until marriage. And that's not my story. For those of you who don't know, we'll get into my story later, but I was in the porn industry, so that's not my story at all. But my friend happily waited until marriage. And I asked her, like, why were you so like happy about it? Because you also see other Christians who talk about this whole purity culture and how toxic it is and how they had a lot of shame around it. Um, and she said, because my parents were pastors and they always taught me that sex was so beautiful, that it is to be enjoyed, yeah. that God gave us our sex drive yeah. and that it's just to be contained until marriage and that sex is so beautiful that you should want to wait to give it to the person that you are going to marry. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I had ever heard anybody say it in that way. Yeah. And so she happily waited until marriage and got to give that away to her husband. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes when people do lose their virginity they don't say oh I gave my virginity away they say that they lost their virginity mm -hmm. it's something though that is so beautiful that should be cherished mm -hmm. that we should want to give that to our spouse yeah. Now, I know many of you are probably like me, like, okay, Brittany, I've already lost my virginity, so is there no hope for me? No, there is still hope for you. God can restore our innocence and purity. And know that purity is always a heart thing, that it comes first from our heart. Yep. Um, and so if you have, like me, lost your virginity, God will always give you a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Um, with my husband and I, like, he was my second chance at doing things the right way. Um, and so when I got into a relationship with my husband I had the conviction as did he mm -hmm. to practice sexual purity and one thing that I love about our testimony and about our story is that 
God gave us both that second chance because we had both had sex outside of marriage and he gave us the chance yeah. to do things his way. Mm -hmm. um, and in doing things his way, it was so beautiful because I got to fall in love with him for his mind and for his heart and for who he is as a person. You see, every relationship that I had outside of that, it was a lust filled relationship. Yeah, yeah. And so though there'd be like these yellow and red flags that would tell me you need to leave that relationship because I was having sex with that person. I stayed with them years longer than I should have. But with my husband, I was able to see so clearly because yeah. that's what purity does. Purity unveils things. Purity gives you the ability to Come see on. things clearly. Come right. On. And so with my husband, we even, before we got married, we went on a whole fast so that, and ask the Lord, Lord, reveal things to us. Like we want to know if there's areas in our hearts and in our lives that need to be worked yeah. on. And so we were able to do that because we practiced sexual purity and we weren't blinded by lust. Um, and so today we're going to talk to you about four ways to stay sexually pure. So good. So the first point is this, if you're taking notes, the first way to stay sexually pure is don't break the hedge. Don't break the hedge. I'll never forget it. Two years ago, I was at work. And while I was at work, I was blasting music on my headphones. And when I was um, listening to music out of nowhere, the, this dog just started barking and it startled me and it scared me. And I took off my headphones and I looked right behind me and y'all, literally a pit bull was staring right at me and i was so grateful and thankful at the time for these two random objects that helped me not get bit by this pit bull you know what they were it was a hedge and a fence i was so grateful for the hedge and the fence you know why because the hedge and the fence protected me. You know, if there was no hedge or no fence, guess what, y'all? I probably would have went to the ER getting bit up by a pit bull, all because there was not a hedge and a fence. But because there was a hedge and a fence, I was protected. Could I tell you here today that oftentimes the reason why we are getting attacked and diving into sexual temptations is all because we don't have a hedge in our life. In other words, we do not have a boundary. And whenever a boundary is absent, failure is bound to be present. That's why I love these words in the book of Ecclesiastes 10 8, and it's Solomon speaking. Here's what he says. He says, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. I love these wise words from Solomon because what Solomon is saying in this text is that the moment you break a hedge, the moment you break a boundary, a serpent will bite you. In other words, the moment you break your hedge or you break your boundary, what you're doing is, is you're dropping your guard. And whenever you drop your guard, you are going to be more receptive to fall into temptation. And friends, could I tell you here today that that is the tactic of the enemy. He wants you to break your hedge of protection so you become more receptive to temptation. So what does he do? He tries to make you compromise so you break down your hedge or he tries to make you go and watch things that you should not be watching so you break down the hedge or maybe you're all alone with your partner and you're, and you're practicing sexual purity and you're dating and all of a sudden it went from holding hands to hugging to kissing. Now you guys are touching, you're breaking hedges. And what does the passage say? That the moment you break a hedge, it says that the serpent comes in and it bites you. Could it be here today that oftentimes the reason why you are getting bit at in life is, is all because you're breaking down the hedge. You see, whenever you break down the hedge, you are giving the serpent access to your life. So how do we stop giving the enemy access to our life? Well, can I tell you what the Bible says? It says to not break the hedge. So what does that look like in a practical way? 
Well, if you want your hedge to be firm, get into the Word of God. If you want your hedge to be firm, make sure you and your partner talk about your guys' convictions and your vision for your life. You see, that's what my wife and I did when her and I started dating. One big conviction her and I had was, you know what? We want to walk this thing out. We want to do it right. So what we did was we created boundaries. We were watching less sermons all the time. You know why? Because we love each other, but we know that we didn't want to cross that line. So we made sure that we set these boundaries and we kept these boundaries set. But can I tell you a little secret here today? Is that oftentimes it's not hard for us to plan a hedge, but it's a lot harder for us to keep feeding the hedge. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good word. Mm -hmm. It's not hard for us to plan a hedge, but it's a lot harder for us to keep feeding the hedge. What I mean by that is, it's easy for us to create a boundary, yes. but are you willing to set some boundaries? And that's why I wanna encourage you here today. If you wanna walk in sexual purity, if you wanna do this thing right, make sure you guys set the boundary and keep setting it. Do not allow what you see, do not allow the compromises of the enemy try to get the best of you, because if you do, my friends, you'll break down that hedge and you'll give this serpent access to your life. So the first point is this, is that we encourage you here today, don't break the hedge. And the second way to walk in sexual purity is by guarding your friendships and by having accountability. Mm, so you know, good. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character so good you know many of the decisions that we make in life especially pertaining mm -hmm. to even sexual purity these decisions are going to be influenced by the friends that we have around us you know i'll never forget walking into church and hearing just different messages by different preachers different pastors talking about the beauty of sexual purity um one pastor, for example, was sharing how him and his wife waited until marriage. Um, another time, my husband, who I didn't know at the time, was preaching, saying that you are worth the wait, that you're a woman of God. And if your man's not treating you as a woman of God, show him the exit sign because you're worthy of real true love and you're worth the wait. So I'm hearing all of these messages. And I remember going home and telling my roommate at the time, hey, like, God's really convicting me. I want to practice sexual purity. Now, mind you, she was not a Christian, and she said, what? You're going to practice, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, you're not going to have sex until marriage? And I was like, yeah, exactly. And she's like, don't you want to test drive it? And I'm like, what? And she's like, like, what if you don't like it? And she starts trying to sow all of these seeds into me that were unbiblical and went against the word of God. Now, I was really grateful that at that time in my life, I had such a strong conviction because I had done things for many years the wrong way that there was nothing that she could have said that could have changed my decision to practice sexual purity. I later ended up having to get a new roommate after that because I knew, just as the scripture teaches us, walk with the wise and become wise, hang out with fools and watch your life fall into pieces. I didn't want my life to fall into pieces, so I knew I needed a new roommate, I needed to get some new friends, yep. because I wanted to walk with the wise. I wanted to walk with people who were gonna give me godly godly counsel. You know, how? what, what types of friendships do you have in mm -hmm. your life? Do you have friends who are lifting you up and encouraging mm -hmm. you, or do you have friends that you know, they're okay with you uh, falling into sin. They're okay with you settling. Yeah. They're okay with you compromising. Like, what types of friends do you have in your life? Because if you have friends that settle, then guess what? You're bound to settle in it's life true. too. You need people that are in your inner circle that are going to lift you up. Yeah. I love the story that we see in Exodus when um, Moses was at battle. We see the Israelites, they're battling the Amalekites, and any time that Moses is lifting up his staff, the Israelites are winning the battle. Yeah. But any time that he drops his staff, what happens? they start to lose the battle. Yeah, yeah. And we want the Israelites to win here. So Moses had Aaron and her that said, sit down on a rock. We're gonna come alongside you. We're gonna lift up your arms. Yeah. And they helped him. And guess what? The Israelites won the battle yeah. because Moses had the right people in his corner come on, come on. lifting him up so that he could win. Now, 
I would wonder, I wonder how many of you today might be losing battles all because of the people that you have in your circle. So good. You might be losing the battle against sexual purity because you have friends around you that say, hey, it's okay to watch mm -hmm. porn. It's okay to sleep with your, with your boyfriend. It's okay to sleep with your girlfriend. And they might think that it's okay. Like, I remember even before I dated you, I was dating a guy that was like, God doesn't care about sexual purity. It's outdated. No, let me tell you, the Bible is never outdated. And there may have, uh, you may have been, uh, you may think that you're too old to practice sexual purity or you've already done it, so you don't need to practice it. But let me tell you that if you start to give sexual purity a chance, like God will radically change the course of yes. your life. He will bring you the right person for you. Come There'll on. be no uh, confusion Come around on. it. There'll be clarity around it. But hey, we need to have the right people in our life we need to have accountability because if you want to have accountability when it comes to sexual purity then you also need to have uh, then if you want stability then you need to have accountability God, that's such a good word and point number three says this if you are taking notes how do we stay sexually pure well point number three says this we flee from temptation mm -hmm. mm, we flee from temptation let's be honest Everywhere we look and everywhere we go, temptation is all around us. We go on social media, temptation. We go and turn on our TV, temptation. We go to the gym now, temptation. Look, temptation is all around us, but that doesn't mean that temptation needs to get in us. Yeah. And I truly believe that Joseph is a prime example of this. So I wanna read this passage to you in Genesis 39, but I also wanna read a passage to you in Samuel. Uh, and the reason for it is because I want to show you what Joseph did when it came to temptation, mm -hmm. and then I wanna show you what our brother, King David did <laughs> when it came to temptation. Let's read these two passages. It says this, Genesis 39, 10. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her, and he kept out of her way as much as possible. Now Samuel chapter 11, verse two through three through four in the NIV says this. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing, uh-oh. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Then she went back home. Friends, what's the difference between Joseph and David when it came to temptation? Well, the Bible says that when Potiphar's wife tried to pursue Joseph, Joseph fled from her. But the scripture says when David saw Bathsheba, David did not flee from Bathsheba. He actually flirted and wanted to get to know who Bathsheba was. So what's the difference? Joseph fled and David flirted with temptation. Mm -hmm. The other difference that we notice here is that Joseph, the Bible said, got out of her way, way as much as possible, but David wanted to be in her presence as much as possible. And I'm telling you, if we are going to walk in sexual purity, we don't need to flirt with temptation. Mm -hmm. We need to flee from temptation. Hey. We don't need to get in temptation's way as much as possible, but we need to get out of temptation's way as much as possible. And that's why I love what Joseph did. Joseph knew that he had a call on his life. Joseph had a dream on his life. He was anointed to do great things for his life but he allowed temptation to get the best of him. And could I tell you that David too was anointed as well to do great things, but he allowed temptation to get to him all because he did not learn to do one thing. He did not flee. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering here today, when temptation is presented to you, 
Do you go and flirt with temptation or do you flee from temptation? Because the Bible teaches us, especially in the book of 1 Corinthians, is to run from sexual temptation. In other words, we don't fight temptation. We flee from it. Yeah. You know why? Because temptation is a battle that will never win. That's why I want to encourage you, friends, here today, that when temptation comes, don't fight it. Don't go and try to say, you know what? Ah, I can mess with a little bit, you know, and, and see how far that I can get. No, 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 friends. When it comes to temptation, you do not mess with its boundary. You don't window shop with temptation because it's eventually going to get to you. And that's what happened with David. You know what happened with him? Is the moment he kept looking at it, it eventually got into his heart. And I want to tell you that that's the objective too of the enemy. As long as I can just make you see it, I can seed it into your heart. So good. And whenever you start to see it, it starts to feed into you. And then from there, like the opening passage that Brittany said about not awakening love, then from there now, you awoken something that God wanted you to put to sleep. So our third point today is we want to encourage you today is make sure you're fleeing from sexual temptation. If those desires are getting in you, don't go and put gasoline to it. Put water to it and run from it. And I'm telling you, friends, when you learn to do that, you will go and protect yourself and protect your purity. And you'll start to walk in that sexual purity that you desire to have. That's so good. And our fourth point, uh, fourth way to stay sexually pure is to guard your heart. Yes. Um, Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity mm. by living according to your word? You know, this scripture has been so true in my life yep. because um, for those of you who don't know, I was in the porn industry for seven years of my life, um, experienced all kinds of brokenness, mm. drug addiction, um, grew up in a household that was just very toxic. And God has really, really changed my life. And it first started because I started reading the word when I became a Christian. I remember walking into church and just feeling the presence of God and falling so in love with his presence that I just wanted that in my household every single day. So I started worshiping and praying and reading the Bible on a daily basis. And every time that God would speak to me through his living word, I would apply those scriptures yep. to my life and God changed my life. Like he healed my broken heart. He gave me the strength to forgive every single person yep. that had ever hurt me. Um, and it came from following his word. And so maybe you found yourself here today with some brokenness maybe there's people that you need to so forgive yes. or some people that you need to ask for forgiveness you need to apologize to some people like maybe you your heart is full of anger and full of pain or it's full of self-hatred and all of these things are impurities that are contaminating your heart and it's very hard to practice sexual purity when your heart's contaminated mm. because you're hurt and so yeah. you might find validation by sleeping with a man or a woman it might make you feel somehow like you're more valuable or more worthy because somebody's jumping into bed with you, but that is a reflection of the condition of your heart because you shouldn't see sex as validation. Sex is something that is so beautiful yep. within the bounds of a marriage. Come it doesn't on. mean that you're more or less validated if you can get someone to sleep with you. So and so we need to really start reading the word of God and we need to yes. follow his Come word. On. This Come is on. how we're going to not only get our hearts healed, yep. but then from there we're going to safeguard our hearts and we're going to be able to walk the path of purity remember purity is an inside thing it purity the word itself means to be uncontaminated yep. that's why jesus says to the pharisees who think that it's all about the external look right because man looks at the outward appearance but god looks at the heart so the pharisees are here like well, you're sitting with sinners and you're, and these people are no good because they're looking at the outside, yeah, right? Yeah. But when God looks at the condition of our hearts, he sees them as hypocrites. Come and on. so God says, Jesus says, first, you need to clean the inside of your cup yeah, yeah. and then the outside will be cleansed as well. And so I just feel so strongly that many of us that are tuning yeah. in here today, we need the inside of our of yes. our cups Cleanse cleansed, cleansed. We need our hearts cleansed today. Yeah. And so if that's you, first and foremost, if you have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, I would love to invite you to make him the Lord of your life. And so you're just going to repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, uh, Father, Father, thank you so much for giving your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. 
I believe that I've sinned and today I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for rising on the third day to give me a new life. And I ask today, Father, that you would give me a new life. If you've prayed that prayer today, you've just made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Now I wanna pray for the rest of you who just need a cleansing on the inside of your heart. Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus. And God, I just pray over every single person that is tuning Jesus. in, Lord, that whatever heartbreak they've experienced yes, in life, Lord. whatever hurt, whatever pain they may be holding on to today, God, I ask that your spirit would just come and wash that pain away. I pray that right now you would give them the the strength to forgive people who have hurt them. I pray that they would humble themselves before you and ask for forgiveness from people that maybe they've hurt. I pray that right now, God, that you would redirect them down a path of purity, Lord. Anybody who is in a relationship that maybe has been having sex and today they want to stop having sex and they want to honor you with their bodies, I pray that you would give them the strength to do so. Lord, if they've yet to have sex, I pray that you would give them the strength to remain sexually pure, but always remembering the purity is first an inside thing and so Lord God I thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of every single person that is watching today Lord I thank you God that we are people of purity that we are people of holiness that we are people who are on the pursuit of purity which is really the pursuit of you so I pray that each and every single day we would not wake up one day or go to bed one day without seeking your presence you, God Jesus. that we would worship and we would pray and we would read your Jesus. word on a daily basis yes, Lord. Lord we love you so much God and we just want to honor you in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. hey you guys if you want to dive deeper mm. into purity my husband and I did write a book and yep. it's called a call to purity living a lifestyle of purity um, if you're in the U.S. and you want a signed copy, you can get it from lovealwaysministries.com. If you are outside internationally or just want a Kindle version, it is available on Amazon as well. We love you guys so much and we pray this message has blessed you. Connect with us um, on lovealwaysministries.com. God bless you. God bless you.